Good evening and welcome to the Hamlin Board of Selectmen meeting for June 13, 2022. Ask you to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our meeting is live here at the Hamlin Town Hall, also broadcast over Zoom. Uh, we ask that anyone who wishes to speak over Zoom, let's raise your virtual hand and we will acknowledge it. Is anyone else recording this meeting besides us? Seeing none, let's move on. The first order of business is minutes. Pam, what dates? Uh, the 16th and the 24th of May. <coughs> Move that we approve Monday, May 16th, 2022 minutes as printed. Second. Okay. Pam, there is one thing on the second page saying checking with Jane about the details. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't hear. Which I think was a Oops. Sit with it. Sit analysis, which is typically know. just the uh, depth part there. So if you just add that in there. Oh. Okay. I, just, I, I don't even think I had the address. Okay. Could that change? So I'll ask the motion. You move, second. All in favor? Aye. May 23rd. Yeah, you know, Craig, I just want to say I'm not happy with that word. Outgoing. Sorry. <laughs> Is that how I said it? <laughs> I apologize. You're kind of an assumption there, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> it wasn't meant to be presented that way. <laughs> I'm being judging. I do not know so much. I retract my statement. <laughs> I have a motion. Um, the green communities part, Pam? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily was going to do more research on it because we already had the research. It was just the concerns that we had had listening to the department heads and okay. building inspectors. So, okay. and uh, the research coming in was just what was being presented mm -hmm. um, from Mark Rabinsky you know, okay. and whatnot. So, so very much delete the last just delete that last sentence. Okay. Okay. Craig right. will do more research on this. Gotcha. You refuse to do more research. Well, okay. I think oh, we've already done the research. Maybe the stretch code. Maybe, now. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, because we didn't know how to, all the information on the stretch code because it hasn't it been. It's just relevant just to that comment. Yeah. yeah that could yeah. Be. Verify that or whatever. Yeah. Okay. A lot of pages here. Second. All in favor? Hi. Uh, the green can start the discussion quickly. Um, before we start that, we did vote our summer schedule. If you could make sure the web page is reflective of that in the calendar button. I think you did put a note to that effect. Change the calendar. Green communities, further discussion. You do have a, a, a letter from Mark Rabinsky in the packet um, answering the question of whether or not an existing area such as the landfill would satisfy or suffice the as of right requirement. So it's strictly a virtual letter? Pardon? Virtual letter? No, no, it was a... No, I mean, it's not in our packet. Not yes, it is. It's in the back here. Yep. An agenda. 
Um, his answer is basically yes. Um, I also uh, should inform the board that I was in touch with BBPC and their deadline has passed and they do not have money this time, this part of the year, uh, to support an application. They said that uh, if you wanted to have their assistance uh, to help put together an application for green communities, it would be $7,500. Uh, again, it's an ARPA funds, it's an ARPA funds uh, opportunity if that's what the board decides to do. Well, he does say in his email that the requirement by creating a silver overlay district would at a minimum include the yes. latest proposed project at the town's landfill. Right. So does that mean at a minimum that there's a still more standards that we'd have to follow? I think what I took from that letter and a conversation I had with them is that they would probably push the board to designate uh, one or two other areas where projects are already underway or likely to get under, like, like the new proposal that's coming forward. So we're have not to be, going to define other land that we think should be sold or that we yes. presupposing. Right. Does it have to be town-owned land, or is that a? Can no, it, be it any, would just be an overlay district. Anybody overlaying the zoning code to allow, as of right, solar applications. But the planning board would have to do that. Or yes, the planning board yes. would have to go to town meeting. Right? Town meeting. Correct. And we already have what nine solar fields in town. Yeah. I yes. think Don made the mention well, last week that per capita we have more solar fields than any other community. Yeah, uh, yeah I no think that was no number road, but by God, we have solar That was very persuasive. I mentioned that to him on the telephone. I said, mm -hmm. on a per, for, for a town of 4,900 residents, we probably have more per capita than any place in the Commonwealth, if not New England. So, so what has to come first? The as of right zoning bylaw or town approval or the application for green communities? I think you have to assemble the parts. You have to have the five criteria assembled and ready to go, which would mean going to the planning board for an overlay district in the fall, uh, getting the other materials together, including uh, the whole area of uh, vehicles and so forth, having everything ready, and then you put the application in, and they would presumably approve and then give you a designation grant. This town would probably get something in the range of 160 to 180,000. One time? One time designation grant to assemble, to, to put together a, a, a process for saving energy. Part of the requirement. <clears throat> Although there's no penalty for not meeting it, part of the requirement is reduce the consumption of energy in town buildings by 20% at least over five years. Uh, and then they would set up, and there's a computer at UMass Amherst that tracks energy consumption for all the communities that are in, in the uh, Green Communities Program. Your utility companies automatically enter that data. There's data that the town would have to enter, uh, certain kinds of bills that we would get for, for energy costs. Uh, so you have to put that piece of the puzzle together and begin tracking consumption, have a baseline, and then over five years, uh, reduce consumption town-wide in town buildings, municipal buildings, by 20%. So at this point, there's no penalty for not meeting that. There's no penalty for not meeting it. At this point. And, and my understanding is that most communities are able to meet it. Well, we'd like to yeah, meet without... any time to bring down the bill. Sure, that's right. right. Now, the overlay district, so that would be a zoning overlay district? It would be a zoning like overlay district. Yes, it would have to amend the zoning code okay. mm -hmm. for the district. Do we need permission of the current projects to make a zone change to their parcels? I think what we would do if we want to go forward is mark out the uh, existing land area at the, at the landfill and then maybe add 
one or two other areas, mm -hmm. present that to them and say, this is what we will present to the, to the town meeting through the planning board. Mm -hmm. If you think this, if you agree that this will suffice for the as of right uh, designation. So, mm -hmm. so we have to put it together, propose it to them. If they agree to it, then we have to go through our own process to get it approved. With the typical, in this process, do you think it's uh, quick enough that it would be ready for the fall town meeting? I think we could do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it. Oh, we can make an attempt if it's not, sure. we just keep it over there. Yeah. Right. yeah. I, I would think if everything worked out well, mm -hmm. we would probably get a designation as a, as a green community sometime, probably in spring next year. Mm -hmm with the grant at that point so so just to be clear the reason we're doing this though is not just because of the money no no it it, it will reduce costs for the taxpayer right. to the extent that we can reduce energy consumption mm -hmm. how will it reduce uh, also the, taxpayer? The, the power company by the way has a consultant who I've signed up to come and give us an analysis of our vehicles. No charge. They will look at all of our vehicles and make recommendations for future purchases. When you say reduce cost to the taxpayer, is that in terms of the hundred and sixty ish thousand dollars? No, no. I think if you reduce your energy consumption, let's say by twenty percent, it will be less costly to the taxpayer to operate municipal now, buildings. Now, when we right, say we reduce our right energy now, consumption, right? are we talking about town energy consumption, like town well, owned town buildings? buildings only? I'm so, sorry, town, town owned buildings. buildings only. Yes. So, change in ballast, things like yeah. that. Well, we change out uh, oil fired furnace furnaces at the uh, highway department for starters, uh, and other other kinds of improvements. I mean, the town has already done a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not starting from scratch, uh, but uh, I'm not aware of towns that have re really struggled to meet that standard. Once uh, they get going, I think they, they can see ways to do it. Among other things, if we are able to get the grant to replace the windows upstairs, that will save, I think, significantly um, uh, for, for the cost of heating and cooling this building. I don't think anybody's against trying to reduce our emissions within town buildings. And I think the whole program's great in that aspect where we're trying to trying to do right by the environment, but I'm really concerned about that as of right bylaw, and that zoning bylaw that's that's gonna have a bigger impact than we, we anticipate. Mm -hmm. Based on, you know, if we have to designate more property and put more solar in town to meet the requirement. I think what he said though is that we could designate existing if we can designate existing, yeah. then that, that would be good. I just we, worry that we, we have to designate, designate the new. landfill project, which we've already permitted and which is going to be built. And then, I mean, my question to him was, can we designate existing areas? Yeah, he says, at a minimum, include the latest proposed project of the town's landfill. Mm -hmm. Permitted is assumed. Da, 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 da. And there is an adequate land area available for large scale projects. So it sounded like he wanted us to designate more spots. <coughs> I think I they think will you, push. I think you made the case that you, if you made the case that this is our designated area, the landfill, mm -hmm. and we have nine other solar facilities going in town, we're more than on board with this. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> they will push, no sure. doubt, to maximize the area designated. Sure. The town would then get into some kind of negotiation with them. But why are we negotiating just because they're holding up money? They would probably want more, and we would probably say, listen, uh, we've got this uh, huge project at the landfill. Mm -hmm. We've got another one that's going to go through the process soon. Right, but I want to go back to I think kind of like what Craig said. You know, A, we could reduce our energy costs in town buildings. We could do that without their help. We can. Mass Save will come in here. We've had that happen yeah. before. We're already paying for that. Um, they're offering this cash money, yeah. basically, mm -hmm. if we do this. Mm -hmm. And I go back to Don's thing, there's always something, I hate to say this, a catch, but I'm worried they come back, like you said, 
oh, you have to attempt to reduce your thing. That's great. What if it's required? What if they yeah. change the, the thing? The next stretch code changes. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I share the concern about the stretch code mm -hmm. changes, the potential changes for the stretch code. They did say that you can always roll back. If you, if, if you accept the stretch code, you can always go back to the standard again. And then the other point is that once you have your designation grant and you make your plan, you become eligible for up to $250,000 a year in grant monies, so-called action grants, to carry out the plan, to make changes where necessary. Uh, now, we may very well be successful with our proposal for the, for the windows. Uh, if not, this would be a second this would be a second option uh, to replace the windows. And we, we may very well decide that the windows will be part of a bigger package as well, uh, but that bigger package could be reduced uh, by uh, getting a grant to do it. Well, the, the, the problem for me on the other side, though, is that 300 towns already do it. Right. And they seem to be happy with it. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, the 300, 300 other towns did it, before they had to start designated land for solar. So they were able to create these spots and now they all have solar fields. We have nine that we create on our own. And if you look at the town owned property right now, most of our property that the town owns is conservation land. So we're not putting solar there. So now we're gonna be going and designating private property that, okay, this person's got X amount of acreage, we designate their property. I think that's a little unfair that we designate somebody's property here and not over here. We wouldn't do that. But how else are we gonna do that though? You have well, I mean, to designate property in town. Saying, I, I think what you do is you designate it the trans light the trans the uh, transfer station, mm -hmm. and you say we got nine solar facilities and send it to them. They say this doesn't work. We say thank you very much. See you later. I'd be on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. The only other one I would say you that you have at any time, you know? right? I mean, you have the other one that's on no road that actually is part of the utility system. Right. If they say we need another one, okay, that one. Because that's not going to anywhere else except <clears throat> the greater one. You know, so right. right. So I think if we were forced to designate new land as opposed to what we already have, no, no, no. That, then that's... that probably wouldn't get through town meeting. No, no. Yeah. That's, that's my so concern. We, right. we, we've yeah. got, in, in other words, it doesn't work unless the town can designate the landfill project, seven acres, right. and maybe one other area uh, like where we have an existing project either underway or in the planning process. Yeah, but I think an actual yeah. blueprint of where the solar is small. Well, we killed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. 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 All right, the government study committee, are all of them here? Oh, what are you? How far apart are you guys going to sit? How down that day thing? I did a good deed for someone. Oh, good. I'll sit over here. <laughs> I, took, I, took a, I took them to a doctor's appointment, and uh, the next day they called me and said, Oh, I got COVID. So that was six days ago. I tested negative today, but I decided to wear a mask. I can give you a kiss if you like. There's about a million things I could say right now, but I think I'll leave them all. <laughs> Of course, I bummed into Don a big Y yesterday, but I mean, yeah, hey, he did have I a big hug. I gave him a big hug. Yeah, yeah, ah, good to see you. <laughs> Giving out free pills. <laughs> does your mic work? I don't know. Does it work? How do we know? There's one here. It's, it's a little green light lit up over here. Yeah, so it's okay. working. Okay, right. I don't know who that is. So we met last there. week and we talked about the, uh, the appointment in the, of the committee and we, and we wanted to know our thoughts. And so my thoughts are that. Point of the committee, and well, let's go back. The one, of the, I think, one of the first questions that really kind of came out of it was, what kind of timeline would we be looking at, mm -hmm. and whether or not what was proposed in the original package was too far out, too short? Uh, could we do it sooner? And my sense of it is, I think we probably ought to stick with the timeline that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, finding the number of people mm -hmm. for the committee is going to be one thing because people volunteerism is not what it used to be. Um, but people are also committed to other projects. You, I think you mentioned the master plan is going on, and, and we've got some other, some other things going on. 
Then the other thing that I started to think about was whether or not, and this may have been, and I apologize if it's in the package and I missed it, I looked it over again quickly today, but uh, we may need some involvement maybe from like Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, simply because my sense is in order to get the diversity of the committee, there are gonna be folks on the committee who probably won't have a, a true understanding of how the government works now. Mm -hmm. And one of us, I can't sit on this committee. Once it starts, I have to be out of the way because I'll have to moderate the vote mm -hmm. of the committee's report. And it can't be thought that I was predisposed to accept the report or not accept the report. So once it starts, they're gonna to have to form. And you folks rightly so mentioned last week, they're gonna need some sort of secretarial support to keep their minutes and track their meeting. So first we're gonna to have to find these people, then we're gonna to have to get them together. And then on their own, in essence, if left to their own devices, I think it's gonna be difficult for them simply to put together an agenda, a task list that they're gonna try and sort their way through. I don't mind reaching out to Pioneer Valley Planning uh, and, and having a conversation with them, if it's okay with you. But I really think somebody who's gonna be able to be Lead them. In, in a, yeah, and, that, and, and, I, and I'm sure they'll form, they'll find their own chairperson. That part, not necessarily so. But they're going to need um, a library. They're going to need a resource mm -hmm. that I, I would certainly expect that a lot of these folks should be surprised over the years. I mean, after sitting in the chairs, you all sit in and the other, you know, whatever other work I've been able to do in town. When somebody asks you, what do you actually do? They really are asking from a point that they don't know. Mm -hmm. And or if you'll say, hey, oh, you know, I remember 20 years ago, whether I was serving with John or when I served with your dad, we'd say, well, you know, you'd be talking to something casual conversation. You say, oh, yeah, we had a hearing on this last night. And they're like, you guys do that. So I, I think that whether it's the board of selectmen, the planning board or any of the other boards, in order for the, these folks to be able to have a they're going to need a resource. Mm -hmm. So by the time you, we pick them, they set they organize themselves. Make sure they have the secretarial or whatever support, whatever the appropriate word is. By the time they have all that, and then getting some sort of outside guidance, I even wonder if we should consider, and I just throw this out there because this isn't mine to put to, to write and the structure, but I almost wonder, do you, is there consideration even for having somebody from another town? Um, you know, you, for example, East Long Meadow, and I know, John, you made the comment last week, and I, I'm in agreement with you. That this isn't necessarily a charter study, like a complete turnover, like East Long Meadow went through. Mm -hmm. But conversely, there's people out there, and I'll, you know, like Larry Levine, and I, I haven't talked to him. This isn't an endorsement for Larry, but there's people out there that have, you know, Larry was a selectman back in the '80s. We served together. But there's people like that that have an understanding of the government and how it works at that level. There's all, and Larry was also involved. And again, I don't know if he would say yes or no, and I should be very careful about using his name. I'm really using him as an example, mm -hmm. who have even sat through some significant changes to local government, who would have an understanding. Do you, do we suggest that we include somebody like that in the committee, meaning an outsider, mm -hmm. somebody who may look at this yep. with a different perspective than somebody on the inside? So what I'm really trying to get to is what the composition of the committee would be, and then what their resources are gonna be, I think by the time you get that all together, I think the original time frame, if you've done, I think you want you want the back of the original timeline makes more sense. Yeah. Because the bit you're saying you have a component, a clerical component, and an educational component as part of it as well. I really think you need both. Yeah. I just yeah. think that the you know it's because you're gonna find a scenario where, you know, having served on the planning board, I remember talking with an attorney one night who said, um, you know, cities, and we're not a city, but again, using this as an example. It's, it's easier for developers and builders. This is the lawyer's perspective. I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but the comment was made that, you know, when you deal with like the city of Springfield, they have a full-time planning board. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're not in a position where they're always, you know, where they study it part-time and then come back and do their work. Um, and everyone knows I was on the planning board. I have nothing respect, but, but I'm just, again, as an example, it's just sometimes I know how things get taken and I want it to be right. But the lawyer made the comment, when you have a full-time planning board, a lot of the issues and the multiple hearings, and multiple, so whether we're right or we're wrong, <coughs> we have a 100-plus you know, you know, year tradition of how this town is operating. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say, is it worthwhile to have somebody look at it from the outside? Maybe that committee is comprised of somebody who doesn't even necessarily live in town, but has an understanding of how the government functions. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we need to do a little more homework on how the committee is formed. There is a resource. doesn't cost anything. 
the Mass Municipal Association has a committee called the FOG Committee, the Form of Government Committee. Mm -hmm. Mostly retired town administrators and managers who will come and talk to your government study committee or mm -hmm. probably the best uh, initial step would be if we're gonna do this, mm -hmm. have them come and talk to the selectmen about a process. Um, it has worked reasonably well. I think they, they're now out, I think in five or six communities. I'm actually a member of the committee. I've gone to Waltham recently and, and uh, have also uh, met with another community. Um, and you just talk about a process, uh, what the objective would be. I think most of them would say, you don't create revolution, that the form of your government sort of changes organically, mm -hmm. step by step. Uh, yeah, agree. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, revolution when you have a like a scandal or something, like brought off the change in East Longmeadow, but uh, right. normally changes are incremental. And that's why I mean the pro the pro con because obviously I remember the MMA. I mean they did our first they did our very first salary survey and study. Um, but one of the arguments that rolled through the building at the time was the MMA is the selectman's organization. Um, I'm playing devil's advocate with you. I'm not because because on the other hand, if you've got something like that available to you, a resource like that, because one of the big things that's going to come up um, if you want to use, for example, um, you know. The treasurer position, whether you look at that as becoming an appointed position or elected, as I mentioned last week, your father and I had this conversation 30 years ago, whether you made this elected or appointed. And a committee like FOG, as you refer to it, or um, or something on the outside who A, can explain the function of it and then allow the committee to do its own due diligence and homework to figure out the strengths and weaknesses of appointed versus elected. And, and then they can they can make a real thing, but I really think that the committee is that the, probably the majority of the committee is not going to have. Um, and with all due respect, I mean you can't you don't just show up and understand the job. Right. Um, so they're going to need to come in and they're going to need some guidance as to how the thing works. And then they, I, I would support that, but just you know knowing what. Else yeah, this is by the way it's 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 an offshoot of the Mass Municipal Managers Association, uh, okay. which is part of the MMA, but okay. it's not MMA as you say, selectmen. Oriented that organization. Was back in the day. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that's changed. And, yeah. and quite no, frankly, any time we ever use the that's still out there. The MSA, the Mass Selectman Association, is still out there. Well, is it really? Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, so any resource like that, I and mean, you know, uh, whether it's higher rather than planning, something like that, especially if it's going to be comprised of administrators and managers, then they've already been through all of this, and they're going to have probably a better understanding, and they're not going to be learning on the fly. Well, and I, I can say they'll have the experience with the education component, like you talked about. Yeah. I don't want to say you're not teaching people, but you're opening the window. This is what we have here. Where do you want to go with it? And they're going to need it because I really think you should have some people on this committee who haven't been involved with anything before. Because ultimately, and especially whether it's a younger family that's just recently moved to town, they got to live with the outcome, and they may want the opportunity to participate in it. So, but they're going to need some help understanding. And we're beating this to death in the mechanics. So I think that you stay with the timeline you have. We look at finding some outside guidance, uh, and I don't think we necessarily need to write. We can give them. The, I think the package that we started with mm -hmm. would be the first thing you hand them, mm -hmm. and then somebody again. If you use the example of Bob, sure. that if you use that as an example, that person can look at that and say, "Sure, I can show you the, the pros and the cons to whether it's again whether you do elected or appointed, or you you go with a different number of." Somebody may come back and say, we, well, what if we go with five selectmen versus three? Mm -hmm. Somebody who's in a position to explain those things, first you understand how it works, and then you, want, you can easily figure out the pros and cons of staying where you are or changing the number. Mm -hmm. Where do I want to go from here? First off, I think reaching out to FOG is the right thing to do. I think, secondly, we can't be dumping everything on Rick here. Primary education, but getting people to help him. Is I think part of the first step. Well, I, I mean, I would suggest to John that once the committee is appointed, I can, right. I'm not going to be a part of it at all. No, but I think we need to like that's going to be a kind of a priority because right now it's all on you. We're asking you to be our point person on this. Work with Bob, get in touch with Bob, ask them for their guidance. Where do we go next? If they've already tilled the ground on this before, why should we reinvent? Exactly it? right, right. And, and that's the whole thing. Especially again, and I think it bears repeating. Folks who come to the table to try and help us help the community improve are not going to have the base understanding of 
how it works. And you certainly can't fix it if you don't know why or if it's broken, because sure. it may not be. Right. You may look at it, somebody, you know, mm -hmm. may come out and say, you know what, for a town this size, everything you got is the way it should be. And that could be. Stay yeah. home. You know, take your pick. Yeah. Um, I'll reach out to you tomorrow or the next, okay. within the next day, yeah. get a contact. It's probably better if I do the contact so that yeah. it doesn't have right. the mm -hmm. fingerprints of any board on it. Mm -hmm. And then once we can do that part, then I just step aside and let them run. Mm -hmm. Usually it's, it's also important to be independent mm -hmm. of established interests, including the Board of Selectmen, the town administrator mm -hmm. and others, oh. a committee of knowledgeable people and maybe some people who need to get up to speed. I know they're working, the FOG committee is now working in Palmer, I believe, and another community mm -hmm. in this region. So. I mean, and clearly, like I said, I, mean, I have to step away from it simply because we can't show up at whatever town meeting docket this lands on and have have anyone have a sense that the moderator is predisposed to accept a report or not accept it because of the makeup of the committee or how the committee did its due diligence. Well, Rick, this is over a year away. Oh, yeah. You're making an assumption. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I could easily be booted out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not sure. Hey, look, I don't know if everybody's enamored with how time you can <laughs> so, I, I can only... So, so we're going to stick with the timeline. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to check with Bob. Yep, I'll reach out, get the contact information. And, you, and you're going to contact them. I'll do it. Yeah, so right. that way it stays away from you guys, mm -hmm. you folks. And then once we get them in play, then we can all. And we have an abbreviated them. schedule for the summer, as you're familiar right. with. So that way we're not asking you to come back every week, you know, set something up, give us a recap in sometime in July. Might even be ours, maybe. I'd like right. to actually, I like think we can do it fairly quickly once we have Right, but again, we're not yeah. every week. So this gives yeah. you. Yeah, okay, no, 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 that's fine. Not stressed. We'll go from there. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks, Rick. Do you need a budget or anything? You're all set. I work with the same one I get for moderate. <laughs> <laughs> you get an expense account, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I got, I got 100 bucks. That's right. That's right. Select the money with my Christmas money. I don't have to worry about it. All right. Thank Bye, you, guys. Rick. Thank you. Good night. Take care. All right. We do we have the exact session mostly for 625, and I do have. I did want to talk about the timelines for fire station and senior center projects. Uh, we do have Becky online, and I'm assuming is Patrick, Pat Farrell. We got the chief over there. That's over here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Hiding. So bring this up because, Don, you had brought it up before a few months ago saying, you know, we've got to keep these things on our radar. <laughs> so, again, here we are. We've come down to the end of the fiscal year. The town is in very good shape, I think, you know, financially, management-wise, all that. So here are our projects going forward. We kind of kick the fire station down the way, down the road a bit, probably longer than any other project at this point, um, unless you look at the town hall renovation. Senior Center is a little newer on the radar, but to me, it's a little simpler than the fire station question. A, we have a price, it's more a question, do we want to do it? The town, and speaking to the financial people, is in very good shape. Our debt number is low, we just retired Green Meadows. The amount we pay for the high school has been reduced by good work by their financial staff. Uh, yearly payments went down by over 20%. And that really, at this point, I think, Don, is our only debt is the high school. <coughs> So to take on something else, a project like either the fire station, senior center, or a combination of, well, then we have the police station, but that's a minor payment. Um, is something I think would be prudent to look at. And we're not, just to say, and Don's made the same point in the past, we don't bring these up because we're advocating for it. We bring them up because it's our job as a selectman to look at these things, make sure we're addressing them. That's because that's what we do. And we're supposed to be as Don did in, in several years, to bring these things forward, look for input, and figure out a direction to go. Well, I want to take a hard look at senior center first. I would say that first because honestly, and you want to unmute Becky there, please, unless she doesn't want to be. I think I remember Becky saying too she was able to get a lot of funding from the state. I'm not sure about a lot of funding, but, but Becky's hey, unmuted. She, but she muted Becky. herself. Welcome, Becky. Hi, uh, thanks. How's your checkbook? My personal checkbook? Well. <laughs> So, um, Becky had a pretty good <clears throat> outline there. I mean, it wasn't necessarily the one we have to go with. That's fine. But it was a presentation showing an expansion towards the road, primarily. 
uh, with some upgrades. There was upgrades to the heating system as well, a tremendous upgrade to the parking lot, which I think they were laying, doing the parking lot in a gold overlay, I believe, <laughs> something like that. But putting that aside, the number was in, putting the parking lot aside, what was it, Becky? Three? Uh, yeah, three to 3.5. Without the parking lot. Without the parking lot. The parking lot was another 1.5, but we've put that put that off. But I mean, how much was expansion? How much was renovation, if you will? Like you looked at the upgrade for the heating and that was something and you might say, well, look, we might, we might have to touch the heating and the roof no matter what. So to do this, it's... Hidden. Yeah, so I think that the, the roof and then HVAC... Um, there's nothing wrong with the current HVAC, but we do find, you know, that some areas are really, really hot at some times and some are really, really cold. So we feel like, you know, we don't have programmable thermostats, things like that, that could be addressed, even if an expansion doesn't happen, I think are things that would need to happen. And those things came in, I think, under $400,000 with a roof and HVAC and things like that. And talk about HVAC, go right back to Bob, you know, green community, you're talking about possible energy savings with upgrades for efficiency. Right. Make credit there as well. Right. But going forward, A, does the board acknowledge the need for this? Do we not acknowledge the need for it? Do we want to explore the financing? Basically, we kicked it. We either need to, let's use a comment, you know, yeah. a bait or fish here. Fisher Cafe. <laughs> well, it wasn't the other one I wanted to use, Don, so let's be, you know. Becky, did the, uh, what about the Wilbraham, you know, their expansion? Is that going to affect us, do you think? I don't think that it will have a significant impact. I do know that right now Wilbraham's project is, has been going through some difficulty. Um, they've had a series of executive sessions um, uh, regarding the project, and I know that there's been some new concerns that have come up at the golf course. So um, I don't know what those issues are because they have been in executive session and those minutes haven't been released yet. But um, I think that project might be a little bit further out than they originally anticipated. I'm just guessing that, so don't, I'm not speaking well, that out of but even if they did are they I even say, if this is like the cvs on one corner versus the other corner are we even if they did the the number of people that are using the senior center we have more people that come in as far as out of towners go our out of town numbers are higher for the city of springfield that come to hamden um, as well as east long meadow so obviously the top users of hamden are hamden residents um, and then it's springfield then east long meadow and then wilbraham so our numbers and i can get you those um, i brought them a few meetings ago i don't have them with me right now i apologize but um, the numbers for wilbraham are not as significant as um, springfield and east long meadow at this time so where, where would we, what would be the pool of financing? I mean, obviously, the friends have some money, maybe some grants, taxpayer money. So what are we looking at? ARPA money, maybe someplace, maybe the new infrastructure, maybe the new infrastructure, federal infrastructure money, I don't know. You know? Well, so what's our pool of money? Well, I you know the friends do have some money i know that we would also do a capital campaign like we did for the first uh the first building uh, and that was very successful so we would look at doing another capital campaign for funding um, i know that both senator lesser and representative ash are very supportive of the older adult community and so there's potential there that maybe we could request an earmark of funding from them um, you know, that's in uh, one given year. So that would probably be closer to when we were actually going forward with the project. Um, so there there are some streams of money out there. Um, I don't know if I could find $3 million, but um, I would work very hard to uh, trying to find and secure funding for the project. The first step would be for us to decide, yes, we're gonna do a project. This project is gonna cost X number of dollars, mm -hmm. but then, you could launch your capital campaign and we could start looking for financing, right? In other places, you know, like earmarks and 
I mean, I don't think you can launch a capital campaign. Could you launch a capital campaign without knowing how much it's going <laughs> to, yeah, what you're going to raise? I just asked my daughter. She's what she does for a living. But I think there's also probably, you know, we have. I want to say what Becky has already. The plan is there. It's a, it's a ballpark. But I think we'd want something a little more defined, and we probably would need to appropriate. A sum of money for a better architectural study. I was going to say, yeah, we need to update that. Right. that was so, mm -hmm. I, um, sorry to interrupt you, John. I, um, I think that that would come with, I mean, if there was approval of the project, then there would be time spent with whoever the architect is. Um, if we use the same architect or if we went back out to bid, then there would certainly be time. There's a lot of things with that feasibility study that need to be addressed, that need to be looked at. Obviously, that was just the feasibility to say that this is a potential for what could happen. Um, we've had some feedback about it and some people haven't been happy with what's there. And so I think the first step if you felt like this was a project you wanted to move forward with is that I would ask the selectmen to appoint a building committee so we can look at all of those nuances and say, okay, these really are the things that we would like to move forward with and then maybe um, funding as well. well. That's what I was saying, the funding for that part, we don't need to go out and buy the whole car, but at some point we need some money to at least get the recipe there for it. Um, going by prior projects, Don, I'm thinking, you know, like Green Meadows, that was a number right around three million to do the addition, and I think the town was paying maybe two hundred something a year for that. Obviously, Bob has said you know right now money is cheap, although the stock market's not not reflective of it. Thank you. So I think you have that as the upper end. That is, Becky talks about a capital campaign. We talk about potential grants, potential earmarks. Worst case scenario. The town's on the hook for the whole thing. We're talking three to three and a half ballpark. And Craig said that might blow up. You, go. you know, that was two years ago in building. Yeah, that was haven't was, dropped at all. Right. So, what will be our worst case? We'd be looking at a note for the possible three hundred thousand dollar year range. You know, but we can flesh that out. Then we try and reduce it by a getting an earmark by getting a capital campaign. As Becky said back in the day with Bill Olmstead and my dad were out there, you know, beating the bushes, getting people to chip in. You know, Don, you wrote a nice check. I, do, I, do. I think Becky makes a good point though about the uh, the building study committee though, mm -hmm. because they have the plans of what could be looking at. You know, there was talk of okay, well, we're not gonna do the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have the, the that committee look to see exactly what they want to do before they go to an architect. Well, that's my point here. I think as Don said before, we need to take this off the shelf. And figure out are we filing it or keeping it on our desk? And I personally think we need to put it on our desk. And Becky's made the point before that the over 60 population is now the larger demographic than the children. And whatever you want to say about it, that percentage is going to grow. It is. So, what was the percent of the budget that goes toward the senior center, Becky? That's 1%. I believe there's a pie chart to, to document that, right? Do you have a there's there is a pie chart. No, but I'm, I think Pam has a copy. <laughs> I think it's in the top report every year. Oh. So just to say that this percentage, which is fairly large, is getting 1%. Yes, the total elder population is over 30%. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> but I think due to, it's, it's proper that we explore this further. It really is. So as we talk about calling to other committees, you know, and certainly the door has been you know, battered down by people just rushing into the town hall to volunteer. This is one that I would hope that the seniors and the council on aging, there is a board meeting tomorrow, will work at getting people that want to be involved. And all ages, all ages. We're not talking, this is just the seniors, everybody. Because this is just like the, the police station, the other buildings, the senior center we have is a great building. It's a great example of Hamden and we want to be so, and everybody in town, every age, should be proud of it. Let me throw a monkey wrench in the works here. Excellent. You made mention of the, the seniors being a, a greater population, but we, we still do have a good population of younger people in this town mm -hmm. that would want to use a community center, per se. Mm -hmm. And we know the library here is short on space. Would it be in our interest to maybe take the, the senior center expansion to a different level, make it more of a community center and 
be able to big enough to incorporate a library and more of event space for gatherings for the community? You know, I think that's something that they could explore as part of the thing. I think the biggest constraint there is land. If yeah. you want anything further, you're looking into possible acquisition, and we already know you you can't go really further to the police station. You have wetlands that area. Yep. You'd yeah. have to build up. You'd have to build a second floor. Or, or you're buying possible property abutting, and that's all. Uh, that's an option. You put it out there. You check into that. But that that would be the constraint well, there. Well, we're looking to establish a building. Exactly right. Becky, you think okay. you can put the word out and just uh, yeah, that's great. I mean, if I if if that's a green light to put a building committee together, then I would be more than happy to get the word out. And you know, I'm I'm not thinking that we want it to be a huge committee, um, but I think a good uh, cross section of um, of the town and and different ages and um, you know different parts of the population would be great. Um, but I will certainly put the word out and pass anyone over to your office for appointment. I think we want to really define what we want when we're saying we're advertising here for people. And I'd like to work on, Becky and Bob to work on that, that we're not talking to people to go out and get the bricks to put the addition on. We're exploring the direction we want to go and potential project, that type of thing. So, Rob, can you work with Becky on that? Sure. Great. Great, thank you. And that you ready to build that fire station? Okay, he's good. <laughs> Just like that. We had a suggestion about reaching out to another architect. Yes, uh, Tecton from Hartford that uh, did Lorium's fire station. I know when we toured fire station, I think we all agreed upon that was uh, that was one of the better ones, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I did reach out to them this afternoon. Um, they're busy until August, September, but they can entertain a meeting with the board, you know, whatever the board wishes. Um, they can entertain a meeting at some point to discuss. That was a good building, remember? It was very conveniently laid out. I think uh, they were working with an office. existing building too. So they were working with yeah. an existing building right. and they were able to adapt right. the new needs. Again, if we take this off the shelf and put it on a desk, I think that's yeah. a good reason why we do he said he was willing to take a meeting. Um, so, yeah. August be nice if he could do July. Well, yeah. he's... Well, well, do we want to try to lock down a couple of dates so Ed can go back to him in July with some well, dates? We only have two dates for meeting in July. Right. So I don't know if Ed knows that, though. Yeah, Bob can share those with Ed. The 11th and the 25th, I think. Mm -hmm. well, I'll do if I can email Jeff back tomorrow, CC Bob on it. And please share our, our July dates as well, just in case something opens up with them. You know, again, this is something. Well, you said you could entertain a meeting at any time. He just can't start working on it. Right. Oh, it's all August. Right. It's September. All August, September. I said, that's, I don't think we're ready anyway. So. Mm -hmm. right. What else is happening at the fire department? I'm training in about five minutes. You're not fully trained. Ten, ten minutes. Training. You must be fully trained. Oh, yeah. We're Training. This weekend, you got something big coming up? Uh, we'll be at the Spray Park mm -hmm. um, this weekend, Saturday. Okay. What time? I don't want to say the wrong time. Is it 10 to 2? Is it 11 to 2? Late morning to early afternoon. If they need work too. And you're just going to have trucks on display? Oh, trucks on display, kids can play, you know, spray some water. It's going to be a DJ. Eleven to two. Eleven to two. Thank you. <laughs> so one down. See you. Or Mary. All right. Very thank good. You. Thank you. Thanks, So with that being done, uh, I'd like to call for a motion to go into executive session to have a discussion with our attorney regarding the ongoing lawsuit. Uh, who's going to provide an update? The board will just basically go offline for the subject of that. We could go down to the selectmen's room so everyone would not have to get up and leave. I'm fine with that. And, too. and people could stay on. What would they be saying on the Zoom? Oh my gosh. I'll just suspend the recording and okay, I'll so suspend the video. Just, just mute it. Turn off the making faces in front yeah. of the camera. So moved. Make them. Second. 
we have, to, we have to get an official? Yeah, this has to be right. All in favor of re uh, recessing the meeting to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing uh, litigation? Roll call. All right. Well, that John Flynn, aye. We will return to open session as soon as we're done. Attorney Kimmy. Starting meeting. Hmm. All right, we are resuming our Zoom meeting. And next on the agenda, and, uh, let's kick right to the master plan update since they're here. And ask the plan board to come on up. Take a seat down. That's like favorite. Yeah. I guess I well. I did a favor for someone in the next specific one on appointment. And the next day, I thought was how I was getting the COVID. So that was six days ago. I tested that yesterday, and I'll tell you where it was just to be. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you all for being here. The, uh, the new Zoom audience, the Camden Planning Board is here. And the reason I asked you to come in is because we've been talking about the master plan update. You've been talking about the master plan update. Let's talk about it together. Great. Great. When we started talking about the master plan update a few months, weeks ago, we got a few um, rough orders of magnitude from a few friends. And we just actually gotten the last one, I think, last week that I read it. So we were planning to just adjust those and what was your, and I know this may predate all of you, what was your rationale for going out for a master plan update? I haven't been updated in 40 years. 40, 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 40 so, plus years. So yeah. basically it's older than some of you on the board. Yeah. I see. So we decided it was time to start, well actually it was the previous chair, kind of mm -hmm. take the initiative, but we, Oh, it's time to take a look at it. What would it entail? What order of magnitude is that? So, it just speaks to the cost for an engine to be able to put together a massive plan. So, they would look at the zoning bylaws or. They go through the whole process, basically, it would help a little. Yeah. It's, so, generally speaking, there'll be. Public input will be interviews, surveys. Um, the master plan is supposed to be like a conceptual model. Um, they'll go over. I, I can only speak to what I've done in the past. Yeah, right? yeah. And the, the, in my previous life, when I was on the master plan committee, basically there was public engagement. You had meetings. Not many people showed up, but some people showed up and gave their vision of what the town is. Um, you know, they'll, the consultants will usually look at where your development is right now and try and kind of focus, develop bylaws to focus. Um, so in the commercial district, develop bylaws that are going to set a clear commercial district versus some of the zoning that develops over time. Like I think on North, North Munson Road, there's like an auto dealer out somewhere where it doesn't really fit. So that's kind of that was the goal in the last master plan um it, it's basically just to look at how the town's laid out what's left to build and where the town wants to focus their development or their growth rather so it's partially vision as well it's it's all vision okay. stuff uh um, well so like we have a new solar bylaw basically it's two years old so we have a new stormwater bylaw yep and we have a um not really that. <laughs> we've got a the culvert that was the, you know the culvert culvert study which is looking at all the culverts in town and things like that uh, so does that all fit in does that all fit into that or? the map master plan is really like fifty thousand foot 
Oh, and we, got, we also we also have the uh, open space plan. You know, so, so the kind of goals you would get out, um, for instance, would be, okay, the town has seen, let's say the solar bylaw wasn't yeah. here yet, the town has seen an influx of solar, um, you know, the town should look at developing a solar bylaw. That's the kind of stuff you're going to get out of the master plan or, you know, with like battery storage coming up now, yeah. you know, the town should, battery storage is going to be big over the next uh, 10 years, the town should look at setting aside an area where they'll allow that kind of development. When I came on the planning board back in the 90s, they were telling me that the master plan talked about the potential build out of Hamden was 17,000 people right. mm -hmm. based on cookie cutter of the land we had yep. with no relevance to the fact, well, this is a cliff and this right. is water, right. and this is wetland. <clears throat> so don't you have to be concerned that if you're doing this type of thing, that it's not just somebody from San Francisco doing some remote thing, flying a drone over, not having any sense of what the actual the town is. When uh, you say that vision, it has to be related to what we actually have here, though. Yeah, and they, they're, I mean, with the amount of mapping you have, I mean, when I did master plan, we're talking 2010 ish, 2012. So even that's dated, you know what I mean? That's 10 years ago. Um, but the amount of GIS maps that the state has allows you to consider all that when mm -hmm. you're, you know, they, they know how many, they know where the wetlands are roughly right. and where the streams are. And so a lot of that happens. The biggest drawback I had um, when I was involved previously, the, the biggest, uh, I guess, criticism that I had is that it got awarded to a consultant and then it got farmed out to uh, college students working at that were in their grad grad program at Mass, and that's all well and good. But if you're paying consultant money, you kind of expect consultant work. You kind of expect right. professional, right. you know, five year plus experience doing the grunt work um, versus the grad school right. uh, program. But but yes, they it would. That's why it, it involves a lot of. Uh, a lot of public input as far as surveys. Um, we we did surveys uh, in Lovell when I was there. I'm not so sure that was the best way to do it. You know what I mean? I I, I believe that if we had spent a little bit of money on you know polling, like an actual scientific poll, and pulling a, a a scientific sample of the town, we probably would have gotten better results the way it but and that's one of those things you do after the fact, uh, or you see after the fact. It's like, oh, we're going to put surveys everywhere, but you're not getting, you're not getting what you think you're going to get because the type of person that's going to take a survey doesn't necessarily give you statistical. Yeah. Well, me, do you guys feel that our current master plan at 40 years old is out of date with the way that the town operates? I think it's missing a lot. I think it's missing a lot. There's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of a lot of newer. De I mean, developments changed that from the 1970s until or 1980s until now. Development has changed. It's, there's there's trends. Um, you know, there's a lot of trends that you can. There's a lot of trends that we may not see here that are going on other places that. The master plan process might bring to light, and folks may say, "Hey, maybe that'll work in in this area." Like in um, in Ludlow, they did an overlay district where the um, up and down East Street, where they can have denser development, because that was what ended up being, you know, the center of towns out on Route Twenty One, where the first church was, but that's not really the center of town anymore. So that was. That was something that that master plan looked at. So it's kind of like, where's your center of town? Where are you going to try and focus um, your commercial tax base or your business tax base uh, versus residential? You know, it's it's inevitable in small towns you end up with overlap. That kind of discussion actually came up back when we talked about the police station and the fact that the police station was housed here, which is the geographic center of Hamden. Right. Oh my gosh, you're going to put it on Allen Street that's so far away from everything. The question was, is that a relevant place to put it based on how the town is now? Right. And the change was that the police department is mobile. It's not a fixed entity. 
like it was back in the 20th century. Right. And that goes right back to what you're talking about here is what was happening back in the 70s when we didn't know about solar, we didn't have an understanding of endangered species and how would that affect development. Right. We put this back into relevance in current thing. Why are we talking about it? It's our due diligence. Like Madison said, it's 40 years old. It's older than members and half the boards. Is it relevant to Camden as it is now? Maybe there's no change to be made, but it's our job and your job to partner with us and look at should it be done. Yes, that's what I agree with. However, what do you think of the cost? There you go. Ten years ago, we paid one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for one. So I think the rough order of magnitudes came in. It'll be less here because you're talking. When you say we, do you mean where you were before? Yeah, okay, well, well, sorry. You're going twenty-two thousand person yeah. down to a forty-five hundred, five thousand person town. Yeah, ninety-five was the lowest lowest bid that I saw. You think there's an opportunity for any grants to cover some of this, or? I'm sure, there is. Um, well, the one the one stop grant that we applied for uh, two weeks ago was for a master plan, and it, it, it would provide the maximum amount you could get was seventy five thousand. Uh, it's going to be very competitive. Uh, no decision on that until early fall. Yeah. So I think you really. I think before even, I think we just got rough order magazines, right? We didn't get any scopes or anything. I mean, honestly, I think the next step's getting consultants to provide you with a scope of services so you can see what they're actually providing for the money before you, you know, you could say, you could throw out numbers, but if we don't know what they're actually providing, we don't know if it's mm -hmm. worth it or not. Now, would these scopes be free? Usually an RFP will be, yeah, 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 yeah right? There's no, no, that's in our budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, if you want to know, are they going to have, you know, is, is consultant A planning on two public outreach meetings and consultant B is planning on four, is consultant A doing a survey? And are they going to look through doing? every single bylaw we currently have and amend it, or are they going to well, well, trust me, look for missing work, bylaws? No, the, the work's going to be with volunteers in the town, I can, I can tell you that. The consultants will run the meetings, but... Um, you're going to have to get a, a committee to after kind of steer it. After you, yeah. yeah, once you, if you act once, we'd have to go to town meeting to get money, obviously. Okay. Um, but once we get past that point, if it goes forward, you're going to want to have a committee with representatives from every yeah. board in town. This has to, been tremendously informative time. Personally, I'm fine with letting the planning board run with this going forward. They've done quite a bit of work here with Jason. I say with the history you have with it, a muddle and you know, helping the board. <laughs> No, seriously. Um, so I don't think you need us micromanaging it from over here. We'd like we thank you for coming. I thank you for coming yeah. in and explaining what's happening. What do we do? RFP next? He is, yeah, RFP, maybe an RFQ when he's going. I think we're going to do an RFQ. Yeah. Your pricing and schedule is an idea of how long it will take. I would imagine it's a, it's a two year after what's that? probably. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool with them taking it, yeah. Three is good, yeah. Board's in favor of three. <laughs> the board's in favor of any three work you get done is great. Uh, Jason, you seem very knowledgeable on the topic anyway, yeah. you know, since you've been through it, you know. I know you don't look like you want to take on that role, but. <laughs> I mean, I, you have, I have, good, no you have a good, have no you have a whole problem. board there. No, I have, no, yeah, I have, we, I have no problem with the yeah. planning board exploring yeah. it and right. getting it to a point where we got a scope, we know what's going to be provided for what the price, and then exactly. we figure out, you know, do we have the money, some, do we have the money, do we get grants, do we go to town meeting for the rest of the money, I mean, that's... Yeah, so if anything, I mean, next town meeting is in October, are we looking to have something for then, you think, or maybe with think, right, spring? Spring? Yeah. That makes sense. Right, because spring, spring's money now, correct? Yeah. Right, and I don't know about the, obviously, this type of grant here, but you would think with the age of our current master plan, the change in what we've gone through in the town with the solar, the building, et cetera, it would put us in a good spot in the grading for that grant. Yeah. You know, like Hopefully, I say, yeah. our, our plan is too old. Hope for the best. Okay.
if you guys need anything else, new chairs, something, you know, there's a, no, no erasers. Once you write it, it's done. Well, you're not supposed to make mistakes, so you don't need an eraser. That's why human nature is to make mistakes. They're not in golf courses. <laughs> I had a boss once that said, what do you need erasers for? You're not supposed to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You're not making mistakes, you're not learning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Board and committee appointments. Um, small market committee. I see Andrew is here. We just kick him into that, please. And John. And John. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Did you guys win? That's the real question. Did you win a game? Thank you both for coming. Yeah. Thank you both for coming. Oh, okay. so we're stormwater committee. Mm-hmm. One's up for reappointment, and we've heard from a couple of members that they're grateful for the opportunity to be on the committee, but they're not interested in being reappointed. We should be receiving my shortly. So. Do we need? Do, my question is: Do we need a stormwater committee, or should we fold this into the building inspector at this point? That's my question. Uh, there's there are this program's going to keep continuing, mm-hmm. so we be continuing uh, pro, um, projects and stuff that, that now have to start happening. So I know one of the last pieces we talked about was we need to demonstrate the municipality needs to do a project to demonstrate to the people a uh, way to conserve and stop some <coughs> water runoff. Similar to MS4 stuff. Yeah, MS, yeah. MS. It's, it's MS for it's, um, it's to eliminate or reduce the amount of nitrogen. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the big thing. So it's a reduction in nitrogen. Um, is this just an extension of the the MS four from last year, or is it a, like ever evolving? It's it's if you will, it's ever evolving. Yeah. It's probably not as I'm going to say is not as evolving as drastically. <coughs> As it was a couple of years ago, okay, when we had to update, but, but um, there are limited, there are some changes that are going to. <coughs> so um, it will always be evolving. Mm-hmm. It will. Um, so you have, you know, you have your consultant, high and um, Your question is, can it go to the building department? Um, some of it is administered by the building department, and then some of it would have to be reviewed. I'm saying reviewed by somebody. I, I don't know. Can you can you get rid of the old stormwater committee? I'm probably going to say no. I mean, I think you need somebody to meet probably quarterly. Yeah. Because you're still going to have so Mark does this piece of getting the paperwork and everything for mm-hmm. all the storm, the actual storm drains, the cleaning, and all yeah. that. He sends it to Ty and, Ty and Bon. He helps assist with Ty and Bon on taking samples and things like that. Mm-hmm. But then, when all that paperwork comes in, you know, should be really reviewing that to make sure the budget that you agree upon is you know, being spent correctly and everything. And then also every year coming up with the uh, budget to do that. So. Mm-hmm. And then right now. The time bond is supposed to be doing this is the year of studying to find a location to do this nitrogen stormwater runoff um, mm-hmm. project and possibly come up with a location and then next and then obviously you have to make it a dollar amount and we'll have to put money forward to then implement that project next year. It is that project is occurs on town land. So I mean we have a committee here and We've done great work. You heard us talk about establishing two more committees tonight. And honestly, you know, like I said, people aren't beating down the door looking to share. We're grateful that you guys have. And I just don't think, yes, we should have somebody. I just don't think. And Sarah's been here long enough to know that you're not seeing us appointing people on a weekly basis for new committees. We're yeah, happy to get it's, it's, Oh, yeah, the lines around the block, sure. It gets more and more difficult, honestly. 
Um, yeah. And I think what happens is um, people's time it becomes constrained, mm -hmm. okay? and it gets when I say it gets difficult. Um, you have to understand the younger people in town. You know, both, both parents working, kids, you know, going up and whether it's soccer, or, you know, every cross, you know, um, music lessons. Yep. So it gets hard, and, and, and so to devote the time for right now. Um, it, it's yeah. difficult, uh, Don. You you know you were on the stormwater. I mean, the, the solar bylaw committee, and it was many really older people. Mora was the only younger person yep. to go yep. um, on the committee, so um, it's a difficult thing. Well, <coughs> this goes back to kind of what you were saying, Andrew. Are we evolving into more of an administrative type thing? You talk about the the parts needed, so, so and I'm almost worried that. So, I mean, if you, if you take Wilbraham, mm -hmm. and right, I mean, so Wilbraham, their stormwater committee is made up of full time paid employees. Mm -hmm. So, they have an engineer in the DPW that, you know, oversees the <coughs> daily day to day stormwater permits and runoff and all that kind of stuff on projects and everything. And then on top, we have the building inspector that, right. you know, helps enforce. You know, stuff on residential properties, and these, this group gets together once a month and has a discussion on stormwater stuff. Usually, a selectman or somebody is appointed to that group, and they go once a month to talk about issues or anything that needs to have happened during regular work hours. That's how Wolverine does it. As well. I kind of see is that the way we're evolving as we. With the increased regulations that Don and I, I think we've touched on this in other meetings, with the building department especially, look at Hobie now being recertified as a commissioner instead of just an inspector because of all the different things he needs to really be on top of. Planning, all the things we talked about, Joanne has to be on top of stuff like that. Is this something that Mark, Hobie, planning, a couple other people, it's like you said, it's the Wolverham. The only thing we don't have is a town engineer. Yes. And we're matching what that is. Yeah, that's another person to have on the town engineer. Mm -hmm. so, right. So I did I talked to Dean a couple a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Dean is the stormwater person in Wilbur. Mm -hmm. She reviews all the plans. Mm -hmm. And her comment to me was really, you know, you may want to get a part-time person if you could mm -hmm. to do this stormwater mm -hmm. stuff. I'm saying stuff. Um, because it, it wouldn't be a, it would, the, as as whether CONCOM, planning board, or whoever reviews plans, in, in other words, Glendale would also be put in. Um, they may review the plans, and if they don't understand it or whatever, we, we always used tie and bond. Um, and, CONCOM can use the time bond, or we use an outside engineering firm where we'll bring up their engineering firm it's themselves. Yeah. Is so, there an opportunity for another regional type thing? Um, and it, Bob is really kind of the expert in this, but is this an opportunity for more regional? So yeah, that is a that is a, a thought, John. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be honest with you. I didn't I never thought of it, but um there is a possibility of that, yes. All filling out the same forms, we're all <coughs> Yeah, talk about the yeah, it's, all, yeah, it's, all the same, it's all the same stuff in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there something no. PVCP PVCP to do? You no. Know, or yeah. I mean the other I mean the other piece too is if you have someone that can do that kind of stuff, maybe the regular day-to-day -day paperwork that Time Bond does for us doesn't need to do that. So cost drifts from you know outsourcing. Yeah, to consultant to in-house outsourcing instead. Yeah. So that's that is a yeah that is a possibility. But going forward, we have <clears throat> two weeks to go until we need a new stormwater committee. We still and have, I think there's still, there, there, I think there's two people left that still want to be. Yeah. We haven't heard. No, we heard the no's, we didn't hear Well, yes, we have our right. meeting the 23rd. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, there should be enough people there. I think we'll be able to have a, I'm just let them know. Okay. We'll if, to you that, if you know, you'd like to evolve yeah. into something else, and if you, Again, Andrew, your experience is vital. You may not want to be reappointed to a full three-year term. I only throw it out there. You can stay as long as you want. If there's something you'd like to stay, 
and guide it somewhere. Uh, is that the cell job, Don? Do you think that's that much? The, the particular <laughs> job I have now, I don't have as much mm -hmm. free, free time. time. And I'd like to put my efforts towards the conservation commission that sure. I'm on, mm -hmm. you know, the fire department, <clears throat> and, you know. Other stuff as well. Oh, I throw it out there. Yeah. I think you know they're locked in, they're locked in as long as you want to be locked in. That's all. So if I can offer, um, I'm not going to be coming back to either time still with the squad. I, I'm, you'll get my again my resignation. Also, um, um, who's left? So it would be John Plaster and um, no, John resigned. John Plaster did too. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, we didn't know that. Okay. I was just in a. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I know that. Okay. Okay. Um. Whatever. <laughs> I got kind of sidetracked here. I'm sorry. He's going to his Rolodex now. Let's see. Well, no. What I was going to say was. It's just Mark. <laughs> uh, originally, originally, how um, stormwater was first started when I was on the planning board. Okay. Um, Joe Prozell. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was kind of like a stormwater guy mm -hmm. from planning. So how I got involved with it was the request came through and the judge asked, does anybody want to, mm -hmm. you know, be on stormwater? And you know, nobody raised their hands and I felt, mm -hmm. you know, an obligation. That'll warn you. Yeah, yeah. One step forward and we'll move back. Right. <laughs> yeah. So again, I I, I volunteered. But I think to be, to be, they were here tonight, and I never broached it with any of them previously. But I think, I think it's a necessary part because you have again somebody from Concom, and you have. I'm trying to see if I can get someone else. Who and that's, from Concom, mm -hmm. Yeah, you and it's an important thing because. And somebody can plan because they do yep. dovetail together. I think they should be more like an at large committee. More like the yeah. more like the CPA would rep from this or rep from that or rep from yeah, you know, okay. And then you've got highway building inspector, you know, as well. You know. So it, it stormwater brings everything. It brings all those organizations together, yeah. groups together. Yeah. It makes sense that they would all work together some yeah, aspect yeah. like that. I mean when you're doing a and again, um you know, if you're doing a development and you know, there's in the bylaws, if you're gonna you're gonna add a parking, some parking space, you know, that may not come to the planning board, it may not come to Concom, but it would certainly go to Lenda. Right. Okay. And then Lenda would stop and say, wait a minute, sure, you have to do a stormwater report. Get get a stormwater right. you know, study done, mm -hmm. turn it in to us, we then would send it out to and that, that's good for the overview, but I go back to what Andrew yeah. was talking about, the requirements, okay, year four we're in now, now you must do this, and you must do the education, right. and who's going to manage all that part, and that's kind of what the committee was doing before, yeah. Yeah. in coordination with Pi and Bond. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're going to make sure we stay on top Pine of that. Will come and tell us, you know, what is required, what's going to be required for right. future, and then we would get into our discussions, <coughs> like, what can we do here to Certain things. Sure. And when is the MS4 permit up for renewal? It's um I think five years, right? And then how I mean how many years until the town has has to renew? It's I think it's probably gonna be after I'm gonna say after next year. Right. Not not fiscal year twenty <coughs> it's after fiscal year twenty twenty four, I believe 24. so. I did it because they had a delay <coughs> starting yeah. it. And then they, and then you know they they push, yeah they finally caught up and pushed it out. So I think that's when it's up because the next piece is this year is to find a project, you know, and um, it would be next year, twenty twenty four would be to implement the project. The project. Is, is there a lot to be done this year? I mean, we just got the recap of the accounts from Cliff for the end of the year. We're still looking at. Out of the your forty thousand dollar budget, there's still almost fifteen thousand left. Is that paying for studies from high and bond that just or permits that are being applied for, or um, I, that's encumbered usually, for something? Usually, the extra, uh, well, the funds were there was for the dry water sampling and wet water sampling. Mm -hmm. So we don't we don't know if all of a sudden the samples come across 
So it's worst case? So, yeah, something okay. comes across, now all of a sudden we're chasing it. Okay. Instead of just getting it at the outlet, mm -hmm. now you're chasing it to the manhole, you're chasing it to the storm right. drain, you're chasing it you know, off the street or anything to find out, yeah, all the way back to the source of where it's coming from. So it could be there, yeah, there was there would have been a lot more sampling, a lot more sure. testing okay. on that. So, so yeah. they're waiting right now, um, time on. They got a late start because of the weather again. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've asked because we told them we need to close this out. Right. Before, you know, this mm -hmm. be So um, the samples are in at the um, the testing facility, but and they've asked them to expedite them. So at least they expedite the bill. You know, and, and they're going to. You know, we can encumber the money then. You know, based on yeah, the receiving bill. a bill dated in this fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. Well, let's. Uh, I don't know if there's a plan going forward. First off, we want to thank you all for your service. You know, the initial part is always the toughest. But you have left it. In good hands. You guys did a good job to get to this point. We tried, honestly. You know, it was good, very, I'll tell you, great group of people to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. Doing good. Even the people who come during the bylaw, while we were doing the bylaw yeah. section, and truly we had some residents okay. from you and oh, yeah. come out and actually, you nice. know, they so want citizen engagement. Was citizen there. engagement was yeah. on, so that was very well for well, the people that came to. Great. Yeah. Give us their names. We'll appoint them to the committee. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do we see it going forward? Then we got two weeks. Oh, we then. got two weeks. They're meeting again this month. So yeah, we're uh, meeting Thursday next week. So okay. Okay. I will. Uh, right. Those are, again, same thing. We'll meet with uh, bring Wendell and Mark back okay. in. But I would like to hear you know what you hear about coming from Plan Bond about the testing going out, making sure Cliff is happy with the billing as well. And then we refuse to accept your uh, not understanding. <laughs> we refuse it, we just don't show up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Delve right into board committee appointments. <laughs> Can you take those two out of the pile? Yeah. Spread them right out. Are you kidding? I'm going to burn them outside. Um, I'm familiar with other communities where they use the model of ex officio seats. For various departments, and that might be the way we go. As opposed, I mean, we may have to back uh, into that. I hate to say it, but I think this is really because of the good work they've done, just like the good work of the solar panel really committee. Good. This is rolling right into planning slash building. Yeah. It's part of the process, except for the yearly stuff that has to be done with high and bond, which could be managed by Mark as well. But pretty soon, in my opinion, we're going to be talking about getting Mark a clerk. He's getting kicked out. You know, with all the paperwork, etc. Yeah, so he keeps getting kicked out. Um, I want to push on the capital and accessibility study for the next meeting. If you okay. Right. All right. We just have a list of appointments here. There's a couple I pulled out. I don't know if you gentlemen have a chance to look them over. My opinion: we have one for Ann Bailey and one for Bonnie, who are the administrative assistants for the relative, relative uh, respective committees. I mean, they're not appointments. They're hired clerks. I just, I'm sorry. They are. They're the hired clerks for their committee. We don't appoint them. They're they're paid. They're paid. Yeah. Right. So I don't. Then there's one for Heather for the advisory, and we don't do that either. Yeah. So the rest because they are because they are appointed by committee. Right, but it shouldn't say under we the selectmen by power authority vested in us. We have no authority. Appoint the advisor. Right. right. Did they go through the process of being sworn in? They did already. Yeah. Rick said he had reappointed them and well, yeah, that's one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The rest of them are in the same Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll read them. <laughs> Wendell, building commissioner. Gary Cordney, electrical inspector. Eric Boise, an Alton Electro Inspector. Dennis J.P. Jr., Plumbing and Gas. Mo Gray. Thank you so much, Pam. Okay. Make it right there. Uh -huh. uh, 
O'Bray, assistant town clerk. Sheila Slate, assistant tax collector. I don't know if we ever, ever read these before. We're just reappointing everybody to their current position. Thanks so much. Michelle Boudreau, assistant town treasurer, which has not been repeated that often, yeah. right? Yeah. Cliff, town accountant. Or Dick Patello, zoning board of appeals. Wayne Moser, zoning board of appeals. Mark Barber, zoning board of appeals. Fred Lesniak, alternate to the zoning board of appeals. Eva Wiseman, ethics officer. Ted Zebert, conservation commission. Still on? Good, don't tell. Right. All right, Betty Howarth, historical commission. The entire fire department. Who are all current members currently appointed? A good number of you? They're not all on there. Right? Yes. Who's missing? Maybe it's on. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Okay. As long as here. I didn't realize. That's it. That's it. Uh, Eva, board of registrars. Antoinette Smith, board of registrars. Ali Bond, board of registrars. Doria Porcello, board of registrars. <laughs> Deb Mahoney, counts on aging. Nancy Willoughby, counts on aging. Scott Trombley, police chief, is a contract. I think they're all covered by the contract. So, with the list I presented to you, I'm asking for a motion to reappoint. Okay, I move to appoint as read by the, by the chairman of the board, including all police officers under contract and the chief. Including reserve. Second the motion. All those in favor? Uh, thank you. I want these all signed by 11 o'clock tonight. Here's your cover sheet. Is the board anything else coming before the board? Now, how about your town administrative report? I have a report, yes. Anything you haven't covered? Uh, yes, a couple things. Okay. Uh, a $10,000 down payment was submitted to OFF okay. for 601 Main Street, oil replacement. Uh, emergency Management Committee has met. Uh, to discuss potential heat waves this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have an instruction for town employees on how to use the electronic calendar and I've scheduled a meeting for Wednesday uh, to talk about posting on the website. Is that taking place, I got the invite, is that taking place of the normal staff meeting or this is a special? It's special, okay. special. Um, uh, you know about the end of the year uh, that transfers, uh, also the annual audit. New telephones were installed today. And they work. <laughs> um, is anybody on the other end? Pardon? Is anybody on the other end? Yeah. yeah really. You don't have to dial nine or any of that. You just, it's a direct line. We're having the good party line we have when we were going, right? Were you here when it was four numbers done? Yes, it was. Okay. And five numbers in Wolverham. So uh, well, a special, special act for the when I was a kid. These two were rings were us, and one ring was for Mrs. Sawicki downstairs. Oh, man. Special act for the firefighter was sent to the legislature. Uh, green communities, that's a decision which I guess the board will have to take a look at whether or not to uh, fund a uh, PV, PVPC. Uh, consultant mm -hmm. with uh, $7,500 ARPA funds. Also, uh, I had a call from a resident at uh, Bars Hill Road mm -hmm. regarding salt mm -hmm. in his water, mm -hmm. which he blames on road salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'd like to request some time off. Uh, I know. Besides Sunday? Pardon? As well as Sunday? As well as uh, yeah. um, Not to say, just for the audience, we get emails from Bob on Sunday. So. Uh, this would be 27th, 28th, and 29th. And I can run the meeting remotely, which I will do. So guessing, I'll be on Zoom. The fish be I'll scared. be in on Zoom. Should the fish be scared? Is that one of the annual meetings? The fish tremble when they know that I'm nearby. 
Uh, You're going to bass tournament of it like sure swimming. Oh, really? Yeah. Are they scared? They're very <laughs> <laughs> So as guys say on TV, you too can catch trophy bass. Yeah, sure. So here we are. That's that's where we are. And I as I said, I put that one stop application in oh. for seventy five thousand dollars. No other information about any other grants or so forth. I did receive an update from Senator Lesser's office today uh, asking me to resubmit the request that I made earlier for uh, an earmark. Apparently, they're going to try and get some money out of the bond bill. So, can we roll anything from Senior Center into that? What was that? Um, yeah, we don't know what they want. Yeah. What was that? I didn't know that we were talking about senior center funding. Yeah, Bob, I don't want to touch on that. Can you uh, prepare a recap for next week's meeting of this discussion about the tree money for South Road? Okay. Um, other meetings, we have a board meeting for COA tomorrow. Uh, there's a situation at the Hampton Housing, which I believe has been addressed, and that's going to be addressed by more education. You know, pictures on the toilet. These things do not go down the toilet. Tell the kids that. Many other. Uh, Craig, anything from your groups? Uh, strategic planning meeting on Wednesday. You have a meeting tomorrow. No. Oh, it's on the calendar. Oh, no, it got, it got shifted because we're waiting for a year end reports from Bob Flag. Oh, okay. uh, other, oh, what's happening with the bubble? Uh, anything in order? Sorry, the water fill station? Nothing there. Nothing? Okay. Nothing. Anything else to come before the board? Second. <laughs> wow. That was like one voice. Did you hear that? Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Did you hear that? It was like woof. Stereo. Where one ended and the other began, I couldn't tell. Don and I had telepathy going right there. I could see that. So, Forest Hills.